Welcome back to Creature Files. On this episode, we will explore the primeval oceans in search of the Eurypterids, more commonly referred to as sea scorpions. Meaning broad wing, the Eurypterids as an order survived for over 215 million years, first appearing during the mid Ordovician period, 467 million years ago, and surviving right up until the Permian mass extinction event, approximately 251 million years ago. Sea scorpion species vary greatly in size, with the smallest measuring just over 2 centimeters in length and the largest reaching 2.5 meters long. The Eurypterids included the largest arthropods of all time. Like all other arthropods, Eurypterids' bodies were segmented and were encased in an exoskeleton. The head segment also bore six pairs of appendages, all of which specially adapted for a specific purpose. The primary difference between the two Eurypterid suborders are their final set of appendages, which correspond directly to their method of locomotion. In the suborder Stelonuina, the final set of appendages take the form of a long, slender pair of walking legs, whereas in Eurypterina, the set of appendages has broadened into a swimming paddle. While it is often thought that sea scorpions were exclusively ocean-dwelling creatures, they later adapted to brackish and fresh water. While first appearing during the Ordovician, the sea scorpions were most prevalent during the Silurian period, where most species of Eurypterids are known from. The genus Eurypterus, which dates to the Silurian period, accounts for 90% of all sea scorpions discovered. While some Eurypterids were purely aquatic, many are believed to have possessed a dual respiratory system that would allow them to spend brief time on land. It was, in fact, the arthropods that first made the transition from an aquatic lifestyle to a terrestrial one, and while no sea scorpions ever became solely adapted to a life on the land, evidence suggests that they did indeed venture ashore from time to time. While no gut contents of Eurypterids has ever been uncovered, paleontologists can speculate about the feeding habits of sea scorpions based on their morphology. The biology of Eurypterids suggests a carnivorous diet, as many were quite large and all had stereoscopic vision, allowing for the depth perception required for hunting. Many Eurypterids had spiny appendages for locomotion and gathering food, and in some species, these appendages became highly specialised, evolving into grasping claws or elongated spines. The largest of the sea scorpions would have been the apex predators of the time, and even the smaller ones would have been formidable in their own right. Although the Eurypterids persisted throughout most of the Paleozoic era, they were heavily affected by the Devonian mass extinction event, dramatically reducing in numbers and diversity. Despite this impact, the Eurypterids as a whole survived for another 108 million years, although steadily decreasing in diversity as new, more specialised creatures began to fill the ecological niches left behind. The sea scorpions disappear from the fossil record, along with 90% of all life on Earth, approximately 252 million years ago, during the most devastating mass extinction the Earth has ever seen, the Permian Mass Extinction. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this installment of Creature Files, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Also find Creature Files on Facebook at facebook.com slash creaturefiles. See you next time.